Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras. And coming up in today's newscast, the fledgling Lapid Bennett coalition approaching its first major obstacle on the streets of Jerusalem. Meanwhile, an entire ecosystem unique to a tiny plot in Israel under attack. And finally, the indoor mask mandate lifted. Stay tuned for what's left of Israel's coronavirus restrictions. Israel's brand new government, barely 36 hours old, but having to hit the ground running, the Bennett and Lapid-led coalition already now dealing with its first major obstacle, which many see as a test of the new unity's medal. I'm talking, of course, about the twice-delayed but now approved Jerusalem flag parade. Incoming Public Security Minister Omer Barlev finally giving the green light to the controversial march scheduled for today telling Israeli media that, in a democracy, it's allowed and important to demonstrate within the confines of the law. That said, in order to reduce tensions and the chances for violent outbreaks, the route has been changed to essentially avoid the old city's Muslim quarter entirely. Moreover, Israeli security forces' presence and the number of Iron Dome batteries deployed have both been increased, this in response to threats from Palestinian Authority officials as well as Hamas terrorists in Gaza who are calling for a renewed day of rage across the region. Hamas, for its part, also threatening to renew rocket fire against Israeli civilian communities and explosive balloons. Joining us to discuss security details and more surrounding the impending rescheduled flag march and the coinciding Palestinian Day of Rage, Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem, Flo Hassan Nahum, and Major Reserves, Dan Pfefferman, fellow with the Jewish People Policy Institute and former uh, IDF National Security Advisor, Thank you both so much for being with us today. Now, Deputy Mayor Nahum, I want to start with you. What is the flag march supposed to represent, and how is it carried out in action? Do you believe that the reality of the march matches up with its stated purpose? Well, the flag march is very simply a celebration of the reunification of our city in 1967, our eternal capital. And every year we have these incredible celebrations. They're not against anybody. They're in favor of this incredible war that we didn't start uh, and yet we won. Uh, we took back Jerusalem from an illegal Jordanian occupation, let's not forget. And so every year we celebrate wonderful young people coming to celebrate the joy of our reunited eternal capital. And that's what it's supposed to be. Now, the fact that a month ago we had to put it off, um, I think was right. It was, it was right to do so then because we were literally at the heels of a conflict and a war. And at that moment, perhaps it was wise, but to cancel the march because Hamas in Gaza is trying to dictate our national agenda is ridiculous. We're a sovereign state. We love celebrating. Uh, our well-deserved victories and the reunification of our capital city is a well-deserved victory. And I think that my message to the marchers is march with happiness, celebration and love. Don't march against anybody or anything. March in favor of the Jewish people and the reunification of our eternal capital. Well, so, so similarly, do you think that it was appropriate to change the route of the, uh, of the march considering that it celebrates the reunification of East and West Jerusalem by traveling through East and West Jerusalem, typically? Well, ultimately, the police changed the route because the most important thing is the safety of the marches and the safety of the people who live in the old city. And so I trust that the police did what they needed to do in order to keep the peace and in order uh, to make things calm. Uh, some people, of course, are very much against the fact that they changed the route, but I think they did so in a very sensitive way. They're going to go to Damascus Gate. They're going to be dancing outside Damascus Gate, but they're going to be going in through Jaffa Gate, which is, of course, right near the uh, Armenian quarter, Jewish quarter. And there will be some people who will walk through the Muslim quarter, and that's okay. There's 5,000 marches estimated and 2,000 police. So I think um, that there's enough... Uh, security here for this, hopefully, to go through peacefully and again, a celebration of happiness, of love, 
Get away. Get out of here. So, uh, Major Pfefferman, the, the march officially got the green light, and there have been, as we just said, slight changes to the route in order to largely avoid the Muslim quarter. Do you think that this will affect the negative responses or the day of rage that is scheduled against it? Well, I mean, even before the march started, we've already seen some clashes with the uh, police and some escalation from uh, Hamas in Gaza has also began. Look, uh, Israel has a delicate balancing act to perform here. It has to balance the needs of a democracy in which uh, freedom of speech and expression are, are sacred, while being sensitive to the recent events and recent tensions between the Jewish and Arab populations inside of Israel. And of course, the timing with the new government is also sensitive, especially as it contains for the first time an Arab Israeli party in the governing coalition. And we see that anything that comes to the old city, and especially the Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, which sits atop the, the Temple Mount, even the perception, which is often untrue, uh, that anything might be related to Al-Aqsa can set off emotions and violence in the streets of uh, Jerusalem. So we need to make sure we're allowing people to express their voices in public, as the deputy mayor said, uh, while being sensitive uh, and not creating unnecessary provocations and tensions. Um, and we need to hold by the maxim that, that sovereign countries should do and that there's a difference between what you are allowed to do and what you should do. I think the compromise reached with the police accepted by the government that the route doesn't go through the Muslim court is a very reasonable, it's a very responsible one. And at the same time, uh, I think, and I hope efforts were made to coordinate with Muslim leaders in Jerusalem, in the old city, even with the Palestinian Authority to convey this, this will certainly be the first test of this new government. All right, now staying with you for a moment, Major, I wanna speak more about the security coordination that Israel is bracing for a resurgence of violence as threatened by Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. You just mentioned that uh, in some cases, clashes erupted long before the, the flag march, as they did uh, really last month. Iron Dome batteries are being rolled out uh, in, in extra deployments, and security forces are on high alert. What can you tell us about what actions are being taken specifically and where they're being specifically deployed, and whether you believe, again, that this will be sufficient to counter the expected threat level? Uh, Hamas and, and even Fatah, the PLO, have used these uh, days of rage uh, often to call out, to try to hamstring our domestic policies in the past. And we can't let outside actors, certainly not hostile outside actors, dictate our domestic policies. And uh, Hamas especially is trying to test us. It's constantly trying to set the rules of engagement that we can't accept. As we saw on Jerusalem Day, they launched the first seven of over 4,000 rockets in an attempt to dictate and hamstring Israeli policies and what they're essentially doing is trying to seek out excuses uh, as triggers for escalation that can't be legitimate. We certainly can't accept it. So Iron Dome batteries have been deployed in the south. Uh, the IDF is on high alert. It's expected um, to be able to counter the launch of rockets. The IDF is uh, also uh, preparing to help the uh, firefighter uh, units to try to contain um, the fires that come from Hamas incendiary balloons. Uh, from what I've read, 10 so far have erupted in southern Israel as a result of these Hamas fire balloons. The one thing I would recommend to IDF uh, senior leaders and, and the political uh, level is Hamas is looking for any kind of excuse to escalate tensions because it serves their purpose. They would love nothing more than to topple this new government, which, as I mentioned, has Israeli Arab participation in for the first time. They're looking to embolden the radicals and they're looking to weaken the moderates. And we have to be careful not to get sucked in to another conflict that serves their purpose and not ours. And so I think, uh, as uh, Defense Minister Gantz has already alluded to this, we need to respond at a time and place of our choosing and uh, not play their game. We need to make sure we determine the rules of the game and not let Hamas set those rules. All right, Deputy Mayor Flor Hassan Nahum and Major Dan Pfefferman, thank you both so much for being with us again. Thank you. Pleasure.